everybody, so new review for you guys there to the upcoming Netflix series, Selena the Series. Many people, especially Hispanic people like myself who grew up in a Hispanic household, know of Selena Quintanilla. She's the queen of Tejano music, one of the most influential Latin artists of all time whose life was cut short way too soon. So I was really intrigued to see how Netflix, with help of the Quintanilla family, would bring Selena's story to Netflix on a streaming service as a series as opposed to a film. I do want to give a huge shout out though to Netflix, by the way, for supplying me with the screener so I can talk about it with you guys a little bit early because we get part one on December 4th, which is this Friday. The series, of course, focuses on Selena's life and all the highs and lows of her and her family on their journey to success. This is a part one, as I said, so it's not going to cover the complete Selena Quintanilla story. I would say it's, of course, starting at the beginning and we get to right around when a little bit after Chris Perez joins the band. That's like where we cover in the nine episodes of this part one. I really enjoy the 1997 Selena film, but I do like the idea of telling Selena's story more in depth through a series format as opposed to another film. And you really do get that here. We go more in depth with Selena, but not just her, but we get a lot more in depth with AB and also Suzette as well. It's definitely more of an ensemble show for many of the episodes than strictly just about Selena. Some may not be a fan of that, but I did like the added insight into Selena and all the inner workings of all the behind the scenes stuff that we didn't really get to see too much talked about. Of course, you have to take a lot of biographical content with a grain of salt because some things could be a little bit over dramatized than what really happened. But I was personally very compelled watching the show, seeing Selena and Selena Elos Dinos rise to superstardom. I mean, we really see their whole coming up, you know, playing shows for basically nobody, all the way up to them playing for huge crowds. I think it was a really nice way to show the growth of the band as the entire series went on. The show generally does a good job balancing the fun, lighthearted performances and family bonding moments with the tough hitting inner strife that we get as they're on the road most of the time, especially scenes between Selena and her father on the road. My personal favorite thing was actually seeing the bond between Suzette and Selena, especially as we got more and more of it each episode. I also think the series did a very good job recreating a lot of the iconic musical set pieces and Selena Elos Dino's performances down to the wardrobe and the hair. Many of them are highlights as they're very fun even if some of the scenes are a bit distracting as they have this weird sort of 80s retro filter put on them but it's only for a handful of scenes. We don't see that in every single performance. This isn't a major problem in all the performances. It's only a handful I can think of but the lip syncing is a little bit off depending on the performance or some of the scenes where we see where Selena's in the studio working on music, uh, but that's like a very minor gripe. I don't really think a lot of people are going to be that bothered by it, but it is a, a little bit of a gripe with me, so I did have to mention it. The directing as a whole for the season isn't very dynamic. It's a very flat kind of TV kind of stuff you would expect to see from a Netflix kind of TV show, but... The performances are quite enjoyable. I think those are the best directed moments of the entire season so far. Christian Serrato's had some really big shoes to fill portraying Selena Quintanilla. And while I don't really think that she looked a whole lot like Selena, I think she did a really good job portraying her as a whole. I really felt that she captured Selena's personality and charisma quite accurately. And she did grow on me by the end of this portion of episodes. I really did feel like she eventually did win me over, especially as we introduce the romance dynamic between her and Chris Perez. I really do feel that this series does do justice to the memory of Selena. I am hoping that this series does actually bring her life story and her music to a newer generation that, you know, maybe maybe missed out on it just because she did pass away back in the mid-90s. So it's been quite a while since her passing that a whole new generation maybe has not seen Selena in any shape or form and will be exposed to it with this series. Part one, there is a part two coming. I don't know when we're getting part two down the line. I wish I did know, but I am looking forward to seeing the finale, I guess, part two of this whenever we do get it on Netflix. Those have just been my thoughts on part one of Selena the series. It'll be on Netflix December 4th, so make sure you check it out then. If you do, though, if you're a fan of Selena Quintanilla, I would love to know your thoughts about the series, especially just because we're fans of Selena, and I would really love to know your thoughts about it, whether you thought they did a good job bringing Selena's story to life or you were not a fan of it. Either way, I'd love to know all your thoughts down below. Whether you're a fan of Selena going into it or you're a new fan, I'd love to hear all your thoughts also, just because I think it's great that we're going to get more people talking about Selena in the near future. So thank you as always for checking out my videos. I really do appreciate it. Make sure you like it, the subscribe button. We'll keep dating reviews, show reactions, unboxings, and more on the channel. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.